Seven action in GHSA Esports. Today we bring you a Smash Bros. Ultimate Battle between the Paideia Pythons Blue Team versus the East Jackson Comprehensive High School Smashers. A rematch of the last year's narrow loss to the Smashers. Will the Pythons get vengeance today? We'll find out shortly. Alright, we have received communication from our opponent, the East Jackson Comprehensive Smashers, and we are ready to bring you some Smash Bros action. The arena has been created and the code has been provided. Once we get in there, we will uh, get this party started and figure out our lineup for the day. Alright, up first for Paideia Pythons, freshman Phenom Bodhi going up against Matthew for the East Jackson Smashers. Matthew uh, looks like a Palutena main, playing 11 games with a 36% win rate, sometimes dabbles in Roy. And uh, we got Bodhi, he's our Kirby guy. Character selections in the first match are confidential, so I'm going to cut the mic. I'm gonna let Bodhi figure out whether uh, whether it's Kirby time again or whether another floaty pink object will make its way into the arena or something else entirely because he knows he's no limits. Oh. 
All right, looks like the first match will be uh, both Bodie and Matthew using their mains, Palutena versus Kirby. Into stage selection, e the EJ Smashers are the home team, so they get to strike one arena from a list of five. Battlefield, Pokemon Stadium 2, Small Battlefield, Smashville, and Town and & City, and they quickly strike Town & City. Bodie, you got two strikes. All right, we are getting rid of Small Battlefield and Pokemon Stadium 2, letting the EJ Smashers choose between Battlefield and Smashville. Apparently, my background music was a little loud. Sorry to our three viewers. Uh, adjusted. And thanks to Coach Brad B. Rad for... Uh, pointing out that my levels are a little bit off. Although now you have to listen to me speak, and that's probably worse. All right, it looks like the first battle of the first uh, set is going to be Palutena versus Kirby on Battlefield, Bodhi. All right, so this is going to be uh, a best of five series. It's three versus three. One player from Paideia matches up against one player from East Jackson. They play best of three matches. The winner of that gets a series win. First team to three series wins, wins. All right, away we go. Kirby starting off with the forward air. Palatina getting a little jab and blocky action going. Man, I gotta do a lot of stuff to this uh, overlay thing before I put it up. So for now, just remember, Pide is the little pink puffy guy, and the Smashers are the other person. Smashers have the stock lead right now, taking uh, Bodhi's initial stock and getting Bodhi up to a pretty high percentage. So Palutena getting a lot of extra credit on this uh, on this first lane. Solid. 
Just kidding. All for not as Matthew from EJ takes the first game with three stocks to spin. All right, for the second match, uh, EJ has to declare their character first, give an opportunity to counterpick, and the character for Matthew is Palutena. And that leaves Bodhi the opportunity to choose anything in response. Bodhi, what are you going with? Tiny fun character, the Pichu. All right, so in this second match, uh, the winner of round one, Matthew for East Jackson, gets to strike two arenas from an expanded list of eight Battlefield Final Destination, Kalos, Lilat, nobody ever picks, Pokemon Stadium 2, Small Battlefield, Smashville, and Town and City. Alright, and East Jackson strikes Lilac Cruz, of course, and Smashville. Bodie, you get your pick of the litter. Which of the remaining six stages would you like? Battlefield. Alright, we're going to get some platforms on here, and we are going to rock the battlefield. Palutena versus Pichu on battlefield. All right, Pichu definitely uh, speedier on the ground and in the air than Kirby. I, said I said Pichu. No, I said Pichu. Don't come over here to join the, the stream and, and start criticizing. With us now is our frustrating freshman, Alex, who uh, decided to introduce himself to you all by, you know, just kind of being a little mean. Alex, why don't you say something so I can nitpick it and be annoying? Uh... I'm a link man. So, you take everything he says with a grain of salt, clearly, because that's just a bad choice. Link, not a heavy character. Um, so, what do you see going on here, Alex? Uh, a very interesting fight. Pichu is a very, very lightest character of the game, and we see that, that lack of weight really not helping him right now, though. Although, Pikachu, not Pikachu. Oh, oh my bad. Hoisted by your own petard. I'll take this one back there. Um, so, Palutena again.
too easy a recovery to his advantage. Having one of the best recoveries in the game. Being able to zip zip very quickly. Zip zip is that a technical term? Yes. Yes, it is. Actually, I'm pretty sure what Pikachu's moves is. Let's go Pikachu is like a zippy zap. Alright, and the up. Until lands. No, which is. Smashers take the first series. Alright, so East Jackson takes the first match. Uh, again, this is a best of five matches, so my day is still very much in this. As they figure out who will be going against Hudson for East Jackson. Will it be our superb senior, Omer, or our freshman phenom, Sara? So, Hudson is a Game & Watch main, playing Mr. Game & Watch uh, 25 times with a 60% win rate. Way to go, Hudson. And the remaining player is for East Jackson is Nehemiah. Seems to be a Pac-Man main with 11 games. So, with that info, coming up for the Paideia Pythons in this second match will be freshman phenom Sarov. Once again, the character selection for the first game of every match is confidential, so we are going to silence the mic and hear what Sara is thinking. Alright, the selection is in, waiting for East Jackson's choice. Hudson, who's it going to be? Game & Watch? It's Game & Watch. The first match of the second... The first game of the second set will be Mr. Game & Watch versus Wolf. All right. Um, Hudson strikes town and city. Sarov, you get to strike two. Battlefield PS2, small battlefield, or Smashville? Striking Battlefield and Smashville. That leaves Pokemon Stadium 2 and Small Battlefield. And it looks like it's going to be Mr. Game & Watch versus Wolf on Pokemon Stadium 2. All right. Getting ready to enter the arena. Warming up those thumbs. Excellent choice on the teal game and watch, Hudson. We uh, we respect you. Well, I respect you. Sarov, not not so much of a fan. I personally like the the black with the green outline. One, go. Ooh. Okay. So maybe maybe not. You know, maybe not the rarest of choice. All right. A um, little bit of dancing. A little bit of uh, finding space at the beginning. Game & Watch using the up B out of shield. No one's expecting that. Misses the uh, jab lock with the exterminator gun with the spray thingy. Wolf dancing around, coming in for the for the grab. Really fast rush down character. Hits Sorrow style perfectly as Sorrow. It's the early damage lead. Also, can I just say, can I just say, as a personal opinion, Wolf has some of the best animations and move sound effects and visual effects out of any character in this game, so I really just love to see Wolf's Also, it's really satisfying. Also definitely has some of the angstiest outfits, and we see there, takes the first stock. Oh, Game & Watch's little double mallet burial thing. That is frustrating. A move that every single person that's playing against a Game & Watch has struggled against. 
It's got tremendous range, hits on both sides, covers, rolls, gives you like a stun with the burial. Oh, nice! Hunts are doing one of my famous, my, one of my favorite things with Game & Watch, just ducking projectiles. Game & Watch really squishy. Very squishy indeed. Really squishy, becomes like a little pancake. One thing to be mindful of when facing a game and watch is that it can really stack damage with several multi-hit moves, particularly the aerials. That neutral air with the little fishbowl and the two fish has four hitboxes. Wow. And that annoying. Ooh, and Sarov takes the second stock off to a pretty solid lead here. Um, Very impressive Sarov being able to hold the stock for this long. But, but here we see Game & Watch using his downbeat to grab Wolf's energy projectiles and absorb them, save them for later. We might see that come back in this game. So Game & Watch could store up to three projectiles and return it with a damage multiplier. I forget exactly what it is. Very, very large multiplier. Lots of damage. Sobs lost his first stock. He still has two, and this game watch at almost 40%. This could go very wrong. Look at how dismissive Wolf is when he takes out that pistol. Zap, zap. He don't care. Nothing matters. Gosh, that up air. So awesome. Hate, hate being on the receiving end of it. Love using it. Oh. Covers a lot of ground. As a person who's playing Game Watch, how's that experience? What's it? What's it like playing Game Watch? All right, Sarov takes the first game of match two. I promise I'm not ignoring you, Alex. It just takes me a while to update the really fancy scoreboard that we have. All right, so by day off to the early lead. In match two, uh, Sarov must make his character selection first to give Hudson the opportunity to counterpick. Sarov, what's it gonna be? Whoa. Sarov will dance with the one that brung him and go with Wolf again. Waiting for Hudson's pick. Hudson switches to the other character that they've used uh, this season, Yoshi. So, um, where where Wolf is edgy and has really cool, intimidating animations, Yoshi's really silly and dorks. Sorry, if you get to strike two from the extended list. Battlefield FD, Kalos, Lila, PS2, Small Battlefield, Smashville, Town and City. Smashville and he don't care. I mean, you have to, you gotta pick one. So, just, you know, which one are you picking? All right. Smashville and Battlefield. Let's take a quick look at the crowd cam. We're here in Smash Lab number two. Team White playing in the background. Wait, what'd you say? What, what'd I say? Smashville and what? Smashville and Battlefield. All right, sorry. We'll strike a Smashville and Battlefield. And that gives Hudson the choice of the remaining six. Hey, Team White, any update? How are we doing back there? All right. Um, Team White is down a match as well, uh, dropping their first game. All right. Sarov, uh, you will be going up against... Ha! You'll be going up against Loshi on Lilac Cruise. All right. Way to go. Smashers mixing it up. Yo, 
Yoshi against, ooh, against Denim Wolf. Nice. Ooh, I really like that shade on Wolf. It's very nice. Well, if you recall, Zarf did say he enjoys Teal, just not a game of Teal. Okay, here we see a back team, a very, very edgy space warrior, and a tiny little pink dinosaur. Dinosaur and dragon? Yeah, he's, he's, pretty, he's pretty big right here. He does make fun noises, and his saddle looks like a little shell. Is it, a sh is it a saddle? I just assumed it was a shell. I mean, I... I, I Very well made for sitting. I kick it old school with Super Mario World, and I'm almost 100% sure that on the SNES, it was a saddle. Huh. You learn something new every day. Also, why is he wearing shoes? Alright, this is, uh... Yeah, we, we, we call this zoning. Uh, both characters trading projectiles, not wanting to approach. As a... As a person who bades a uh, zoner, I love to see this kind of gameplay. Oh, wow, and then uh, the, the approach wins Sara of the first stock of the game. There hasn't been a lot of very close direct combat this game, so it's been kind of spaced out. Quick exchanges and pokes, followed by a whole lot of projectile spacing. Oh, actually, you know what? Like, really good call pick in Lilac for Yoshi because the arc of Yoshi's projectile can benefit from that little slanted stage, whereas Sarov suffers. His projectile just goes straight. Maybe it was strategic. Hey, look at that. Look at some high level analysis going on here. Correct. He, he knows infinitely more about this game than I do, but he's also playing the game, so, um, yeah. I said dumb things, he said smart things, but I'm not going to recount it because I'm just into this movie. Sarov still holding on to his stock. Yoshi's at about 85% pro percent with Fighting Wolf, especially if he gets off like, literally any smash attack. Or a little forward air. Right, two stocks of these, but Sarov got Still, still control this matchup, but Yoshi can't I wish I could get 85% extra head on top of my assignments. <laughs> I wish I could get 85% extra head on top of my Oh, a zinger there. Alex is a wonderful student, and I had the pleasure and honor and privilege of teaching him for two years, so that was just purely a joke between friends. Yup. But also, it was a pretty sick burn. I did mention Lord of the Flies by English I did my, on my English test. You know, there's something, something to be said for reading classics, even if they're written by terrible people. Alright, back to the match. <laughs> <laughs> we see Yoshi is now his last stock at about 51%. He was hanging on about 100 on his second stock. It'd be really great if Sarov could take the stock with this, but I think he's got a pretty sizable lead. Dude, we have five fans watching. This is awesome. Thanks for the support. Smash that like button and hit subscribe to really help the channel. Yoshi's off stage. This could be Wolf's opportunity. Now Wolf's off stage. Can he, he can't recover. That recovery has a kind of weird kind of way it curves and hit that ball on stage and went to the side. Yeah, it, it, it sort of just... Ooh, with a little back air and the final stock of the match. Paideia evens it up. Tied at 1-1. One, one. So this will go to at least four sets. Man, even, even Wolf's victory pose is edgy. He, he put his arm up like a dramatic T. If I were to guess, it looks like the white team's player, Lewis, might have just dropped the match, but they got it. Next for Paideia is our superb senior, Omer. Omer, uh, a, a holdover from last season, captaining this blue team into the new era of fall play. Omer, let's get you on the crowd cam. Why don't you say hi to your fans? Oh, that's still Sarov. No, oh, come on. Checking matchups and statistics and frame rate data on his phone, no doubt. Taking this very 
very seriously. Okay? All right. Um, do, do, do. My match. Oh, no. There we go. My match assist is working again. Sorry about that. All right. So here we go with Omer stepping in against Nehemiah, I believe. As always, the first selection is confidential. Uh, looking at stats, Nehemiah is a Pac-Man main, playing Pac-Man in 11 games with a 54% win rate. Has also dabbled in Luigi, five games with 20%. And ooh, took uh, took Alex's favorite link for, for two rides um, unsuccessfully. All right, looks like this matchup will be Mario versus Pac-Man. East Jackson gets to strike first from the list of five. Omer, how are you feeling about the Pac-Man matchup? It's fine, it's whatever, it's just Pac-Man. Confidence. All right, uh, they struck small battlefield. You get to strike two from the list of five. What would you like to get rid of? Um, battlefield, PS2, Smashville, and Town and City. Getting rid of Smashville and Town. Leaving Battlefield and PS2 for Nehemiah to choose from. All right, looks like it's going to be Pac-Man versus Mario on PS2. All right, ooh, going with the, uh, the maroon armband. I'm trying to learn Pac-Man, and I think I prefer the blue. All right, some good setups early on for Nehemiah using uh, Pac-Man specials to create some traps, causing Omer and his rush down Mario to chase him around the screen. All right, um, Pac-Man has Melon loaded. That takes a stroke. Oh, no, actually, you can just uh, switch to Galaxia. All right, using the set special there. Omer using some projectiles of his own, smashing through that hydrant, which takes about 14% damage before it goes flying. Oh, and Omer goes the recovery while trying to edge guard. It happens. It happens. Stay confident and loose. Recovering with the grab. Trying to edge guard with the water gun. Dodges the projectile. All right, now Maya setting up uh, a projectile of his own, using the back air dismount, and he catches the Galaxian, so he can throw it again, but throws it a bit high. Mario's up to the next, slides through, evens it up, and limits the damage of that uh, missile put edge guard. So there are two stocks apiece. Uh, Omer at 31%, um, seeming to have the momentum. Blocks the Galaxian, shields through the follow-up, and dodges the smash attack. And just punching his way straight through the Hydrant. Apple is loaded. That launch... Oh, no, no. I'm, why am I always off one? Super Melon's funny. It goes really slow. You can do some cool setups with it. They're a little bit difficult. All right. Apple is fun because it throws at a downward trajectory but launches the opponent upward, setting up some aerial combos. And pack materials are pretty solid. I'm trying to use the smash attack in there. Nice job catching the strawberry for getting two projectiles out of one there. 
Omer following up his own projectile, causing Pac-Man to get rid of the orange. And the back air lands. Get that hydrant out of here. Nice. Pac-Man lands the grab. Lands the melon and catches it back, setting it up. Oh, excellent trap there. Takes Omer's second stop, but he is at 108%. Pac-Man's really midway character. He probably survives some more damage unless Omer lands a solid combo. Grab adds 20 there, setting up the edge guard. Pac-Man's recovery is redonkulous, though. Although that time he has to land in a vulnerable place. And Omer takes the third stock with no damage, so they are even going into final stock. Shields through the Galaxian. That's the follow-ups. Orange is loaded. A straight yeah. Whoa! Not sure what happened there. Sometimes Pac-Man can get stuck in their recovery if they miss input and start scrolling through the bonus fruit. Um, GG's. East Jackson? Yeah, that's unfortunate. That was, uh, that was a pretty tight match going into that third stock. like a cheap squire strat and it still sounds like I'm better than anybody. We're talking guitars over here. We should be talking Smash Bros. So, uh, the, the selection for the second match, um, Paideia has to declare first and Omer also dancing with the one that brought him going with Mario. I'm from New Jersey. Sometimes I say Mario and people humiliate me for that in the South, but I'm going to try really hard to keep saying Mario. I'm just saying, like, Mario, it sounds better. Mario. Mario. All right, it's going to be Pac-Man versus Mario again. Oh, Mario, you got to strike two from the extended list. Striking FD and Smashville. And Hamaya gets their pick from the remaining six. We've seen the Smashers willing to go to Lilat, but here they're going to Pokemon Stadium too. All right, so we got Pac-Man versus Mario on PS2. Alex, you abandoning me? Can you at least give me an update on uh, Team White? Three, two, one. Right. Team White is in their second set. They are tied 1-1 after dropping the first set 0-2. All right, so once again, um, uh, the Smashers start uh, with their Pac-Man trying to use the Hydrant and Bonus Fruit to set up some traps. On Omer continues to rush through with Mario, trying to close the distance and land some sick combos and smash attacks of his own. Of course, the characters switch sides, so it's going to take me an eternity to move the overlay around. No one that's listening cares about that. There we go. Just in case you forgot. Sends the apple right back, doing a solid amount of damage and claiming the first stock. Mario's Mario's reflector is just out. Oh, and Mario steals the Pac-Man move where you stand in front of the hydrant and charge your smash attack, only to let the hydrant push you to close the distance and unleash it. Oh, man, that was filthy. Dastardly deed. <laughs> Launches the hydrant 
All right, I'm back after a little break. Lucy's very excited. What is happening? Oh, dude, char charging, charging your smash attack right in front of the hydrant and then unleashing it after the water pushes you at your opponent is literally my favorite move. Oh, and I never land it. He did the thing. I get it. I, like, literally never. I think I've lost to you every time I've played Pac-Man because I only try that move. Yeah. Oh, the bell is out. Dangerous because it keeps its, hit, its hitbox while it's bouncing behind Mario there. But Omer, lucky to avoid it. Get Pac-Man at some high, high percentage on the second stock while at a high percentage on his first. Mario looking to take a two-stock lead here. Trying to kill Pac-Man with his famous forward aerial. But gets the down tilt kill. All right. Smashers down to their last stock as Omer knocks back the melon, catches it, sends it back. There was some, there was, there, there was some, there was some spice in that one. That was, that was sick. I think we got an apple loaded here. Some uh, matches. All right, the match is still going pretty well. Pac Man at a very high percent of there. Just starting a second stock. He takes the game with a forward aerial spike. Now that was nice. Striking Battlefield in Town City. Right as you left. All right, so um, Paideia up two one. Omer going in the fourth round against uh, Palatina on PS2. Um, we're working on some technical difficulties over with the match assist for Team White, so I'm going to turn this over, back over to frustrating freshman, but also phenomenal friend, Alex. Aww. All right, as we see the first game of our fourth series starting, Mario... Just immediately throw out that fireball. Try to combo Palutena. Ooh, going for the forward air. Magic that would spike. That would have been sick. Right now. Yeah, 
set still hanging on. stock in a very, very impressive fashion. Ending it with a spike from that Mario forward aerial. We are starting another game, Mario versus Palutena. This time on Battlefield. Omer realizes that he's not selected a song to play for this match. Panicking right at the beginning, not a good way to start this match. And Palutena. And a SD. Very unfortunate that Palutena just... We all, we all do it, just sometimes mess with that recovery with a holy time fast fall or down there. It happens to the best of us. But that does put Palutena's at a substantial down list. Losing your first stock that quickly just... Especially against Omer being only at 27%. And already getting Palutena up to 84. He could kill her right now.
the East Jackson Smashers for the battles. Uh, total good luck with the rest of the season. Uh, thank you so much to Coach Michael for handling the chat for them, and uh, big props to uh, their players. Those were some dope battles. Way to go, Hudson, Nehemiah, and Matthew. All right, so the Paideia Blue team um, advances to 4-2 and two on the season. Still um, one game behind um, most other teams because the Smash Dragons are trying to dodge us. We've had one game rescheduled 50 billion times. Um, we will hopefully play our missing game tomorrow uh, at 3.30 against the Smash Dragons uh, as the Pythons blue team continues their rectilinear crawl towards the playoffs. Tune into the Paideia Esports channel tomorrow for some Mario Kart action as our racing Pythons also continue their drive to the playoffs. I guess uh, we're out. I would turn it over to Alex for a sign off, but he went to go and I don't know, main link somewhere. Boring. Have a great evening, everybody, and thanks for tuning in.